Geological studies commonly involve measurements of the orientations of rock structures like bedding planes, fault planes, folds and so forth. And stereographic projections are tools to help visualise these features and establish the geometric relationships between them. In this presentation we're going to look at how we can plot planes and we'll use two methods to do this. So this is a stereo net, it's a set of curves we'll use for tracing and embedded through it is a drawing pin. You position this in from underneath though you may wish to make the hole first from the front side so you know where you're aiming for. And then impaled on this pin we stick a piece of tracing paper so that we can see through to the net below and it's on this tracing paper that we'll carry out our analysis. Because we're dealing with the orientation of things we need to mark a north which we can align up onto the top of the curves like that. More of this later. So let's remind ourselves about how we record planes. These are measured as a strike and a dip plus a dip direction. So let's imagine these are bedding planes and these lines here are the orientation of strike, in other words the trend of horizontal lines on the planes. So we line up our compass with these horizontal lines, keeping the compass flat, and measure the bearing of a horizontal line on this plane measured relative to north. So therefore the value of strike will have a value somewhere between 0 and 359 the bearing points of a compass. To measure the inclination of the plane we measure its dip which is measured from horizontal in the direction of maximum inclination and that will have a value somewhere between 0 and 90. To avoid any ambiguities we also record the approximate dip direction in other words towards the southeast. So that's how we measure a plane. It could be a bending plane, it could be a cleavage plane, it could be a fault plane. Any two-dimensional surface in our 3D world we measure with a strike and a dip and an approximate dip direction. So now we're going to look at how planes plot on a stereographic projection. The stereographic projection is a representation of the three-dimensional world in two dimensions. So the stereographic projection is a 2D representation of a sphere. Great circles are essentially rather like lines of longitude and they run top to bottom on this projection. What do these mean? Well, let's try and visualize a hemisphere and we'll do this using a household object, a melon. Here we are looking down on a melon and it's a complete melon, so it's a whole sphere. Let's chop it in half and now it's a hemisphere and we're looking down on the bottom half so it's the lower hemisphere. Let's just hollow it out and set up its orientation. So here we are, we put the north arrow at the top and we're interested in the green skin of the melon, not the fruity bit in the middle, but imagine just the surface of the melon and I've outlined where it intersects our view with the red circle. Let's imagine what a plane looks like if it cuts through the melon rather like a big meat cleaver. And the cleaver face would be equivalent to the plane we're trying to plot. So let's imagine what a plane that has a strike of 050 and a dip of 30 degrees towards the southeast quadrant. So if we wanted to put a cleaver through the melon, we'd line it up with the white skewer you can see coming in with bearing 050. And we chop down. So this cut would have this sort of shape. So imagine this piece of cardboard is the cleaver face. The horizontal lines represent strikes. So this is the orientation of our plane in 3D space with a strike and a dip shown by that triangle and inclined down at 30 degrees down towards the southeast. Let's take the cardboard away and look at the cut that we've made in the melon. There we go. And we've taken out a segment of melon to reveal the cut face. The arc of that cut as it intersects the skin of the melon is a great circle. Let's just take the melon away. So that's the shape of the cut looking down on the cut as it intersected the skin of the melon. And it represents a plane oriented 050 30 southeast. Let's go back to our melon. So now what we've done is put a vertical cut through the melon with the same strike, 050, but it's a vertical plane that's cut through it, so it has a dip of 90. 
doesn't dip to a quadrant, it's straight down. This is represented by a straight line, which is a great circle cutting straight across. So if we take the melon away, this is what it looks like. So let's compare our two cuts, the vertical plane on the left and the inclined plane on the right. They both have the same strike, but they have different dips. So the arcuateness of our great circle is representative of the dip. The more arcuate it is, the shallower the dip. Very straight curves that go straight through the middle of the plot represent vertical planes. Let's just reprise that by looking back at our melon. Here's the vertical plane. There's the inclined plane down towards the southeast. And a horizontal plane is basically the edge of our circle here. It's the cut we made to reveal the hemisphere. So that's a horizontal plane plotting right around our stereographic projection, the inclined plane and the vertical plane. So let's plot some of these things actually accurately using the stereographic projection. So this is our stereonet with tracing paper on top. The pin through the middle anchors the tracing paper so that we can rotate it around keeping the tracing curves below fixed. So let's plot this plane 05030 dipping towards the southeast quadrant. So we measure around the edge of the stereo net on a bearing of 050 measured around from north. We now align that with the tracing curves underneath so that the great circles cluster up on that bearing of 050. One of these curves that's running up and down the view represents the plane. So we count in 30 degrees, as you can see with that arrow, and trace on the curve. That is the great circle that represents the plane 05030. We just have to make sure that it's inclined down towards the southeast quadrant, and you can see there it is. It is down towards the southeast quadrant. And that's especially obvious if we return everything back round to north. You can see that the great circle bows towards the southeast. So that's simply how we plot a plane, it could be a bedding plane, as a great circle on the stereo net. So now we're going to move on and look at another way of plotting planes, this time as poles. So what are poles? Well, let's go back to our representation of some bedding planes. And this is the pole. The pole is a line that is orthogonal to our particular plane. A single orientation of a bedding plane has a single orientation of a pole. We can relate the pole to the dip direction of our bedding plane and both of these directions are contained within a single vertical plane. So the pole lies in a vertical plane that contains the dip direction of the bedding plane that we're interested in. So let's go back to our melon and try and look at some visualization again. So here is our original plane that we cut, which is 05030, dipping towards the southeast. And its pole goes down here, inclined off to the opposite quadrant. We can perhaps visualize this in another way. So imagine that the back of my hand here is the plane with its strike running along parallel to my fingers, dipping down towards the tabletop. The pole represented by the pen is inclined through my hand into the opposite quadrant to the plane of the back of my hand. So the pole will plot on a stereo into a quadrant opposite the great circle that represents its plane. In other words, it will plot somewhere over here relative to the great circle that we've already plotted. So how do we actually plot it accurately? Rotate the great circle back so it overlies the tracing curves. And you can see the dip direction towards the southeast. And we use this to count in along to find the dip of 30 degrees. So we simply keep counting in the same direction 
out along a vertical plane, in other words, a, a great circle that goes through the middle of the stereo net, and we keep counting out along from the dip direction another 90 degrees. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. And that is the pole, 90 degrees out from the original plane that we plotted, our bedding plane, if you will. So that is the pole to that great circle. So these are two different ways to show the orientations of planes, of a bedding plane, a cleavage plane, a fault plane. We can plot them as great circles, forming these big arches on the stereo net, or we can simplify their plot and plot them as dots as the pole. Two different ways to show the orientations. We can use them in different ways to illustrate different features when we come to apply them to geological studies. This is just our first step into exploring the use of stereographic projections. We've got a way of plotting two-dimensional features, planes in other words, and we'll be able to use these approaches to analyse geometric relationships between different planes. In the next video, we'll look at how linear features can be plotted on stereographic projections.